We have all heard of Kaizo Mario. It is one of the hardest Super Mario games ever, and over the many years, many different versions have been made. For example, you got one set in Super Mario World, which was the first ever, and in recent years, they've even made ones that are set in the world of Super Mario Galaxy. In time, the genre even expanded outside of the Super Mario franchise, and they have become incredibly popular on the internet. However, no one really knows where the idea of Kaizo Mario Mario even came from. Sure, most people have seen others play it or played it themselves, but no one knows the story behind it all. And so today, we will look into the history of Kaizo Mario. Now, as you can imagine, the history of fan-made video games and ROM hacking is a lot older than Kaizo Mario itself. As far as I could find, all of it began as soon as Nintendo started releasing hit games like Super Mario Bros. in 1985. And even some earlier examples of Kaizo Mario concepts exist as soon as level editors hit the scene. As far as I could find, it all started on July 1st, 1987, when the first product for hacking FDS games hit the market in Japan and it was called the Tokachi Editor. While it is impossible to know for sure, all the information out there suggests that this one was the first ever to be commercially released. It was produced by a company called i2co.limited and retailed for 7,800 yen. And this device allowed users to modify the code of their FDS discs, but it was quite complicated. And sadly enough, there isn't much information on this topic but it seems like this was the start of it all. Now, Kaizo simply means modified or reconstructed, and so almost any Super Mario ROM hack or fan game could be labeled as one. However, when most people think of them, they imagine a game that's incredibly hard and even unfair in certain ways. But for a long time, this kind of game wasn't really a thing, until an elusive creator and his friends joined the scene, and they were known as T. Takamoto and R. Kiba. This Mr. T. Takamoto originally created the work now known as Kaizo SMW1 in 2007 for his friend R. Kiba to play. And a video of Kiba's attempts was compiled and uploaded in a series on Japanese video sharing website Nico Video. Now, Takamoto followed this up in 2008 with another, more difficult hack known as Kaizo SMW2. And then for a while, they actually vanished. But, like Luckily enough, in 2012, they came back to drop a final installment of the series. Once again, with Kiba the controller. It was known as Kaizo SMW3, and it is still one of the most difficult challenges available for any Super Mario World player anywhere. I mean, with each new version, it became more hellish. So obviously, this one was ridiculous. And that's also the whole idea behind what Takamoto was doing. He wanted to create something that was borderline insane. These platforming games are designed to test the player's patience and skill while incorporating elements of mischief and discovery. For example, a Kaizo game might require you to perform precise technical jumps to cross a large gap only to hit an invisible block near the gap's end that sends the player, you, to your death, forcing you to start the whole level once again. It really is some sadistic stuff. This is for the people who like to see someone suffer or just want to suffer themselves. Now in the end, these videos gained a large amount of popularity on the video website Nico Nico. And of course, meme works featuring the video became very popular as well. Even rips of the original video were re-uploaded on other platforms by other users which made the cult following grow even more. Notably, a user on YouTube uploaded the Kaizo Super Mario World 1 video as A-Hole Mario, and this in turn caused it to gain viral popularity with Western audiences. But, as expected, because it is Nintendo after all, both Takamoto's original Kaizo video as well as the re-uploaded A-Hole Mario series were removed from their platforms due to DMCA strikes from Nintendo sometime between 2013 and 2015. This is something that happens a lot. Nintendo is quite strict when it comes to stuff like this, and many projects were taken down by them aside from this one. Heck, I have even had trouble with them because of certain videos. However, there's still one YouTube channel out there that's called this. I can't really pronounce it. 
which has playlists of all the original videos. Now in the end, we have no idea who the creator of Kaizo Mario is. They disappeared at some point and kind of left the scene. There are people who have been trying to figure out who they truly are, because their names were just synonyms, but in the end, it all remained a mystery. But, thanks to them, the new era of Kaizo Mario really started. The one most of us know and love. Now as we all know, Kaizo games are custom releases. They are made by fans after all, and so because of that, they are traditionally played using emulators or cartridges that let users load their own games, which can be a problem like I mentioned before. Nintendo is usually not a big fan of such practices. Now in the end, creators and fans of Kaizo games developed into a very specific scene, some sort of niche group of people. But in the end, they expanded their reach with the release of a legit Nintendo title, Super Mario Maker, a 2015 video game that lets players easily create custom levels for each other without modifying another game's code. Thanks to this, the whole concept of Kaizo Mario levels went mainstream in the Nintendo community, being played by young and old, and now anyone could make levels with very little effort compared to how it used to be back in the day. It also felt like Nintendo finally acknowledged the Kaizo and ROM hacking community as a whole, who were ignored or even shut down for years. But if you actually look into the development history of Super Mario Maker, you can see that it could have been released a lot earlier, because Nintendo had previously explored the concept of a video game editor in the 1990s which is right around the time that the Kaizo Mario community really started to develop. We know this was the case because a patent filed by the company in 1994 detailed a piece of video game hardware that allowed players to pause a game while playing it and edit parts of it before resuming gameplay, as well as allowing the saving and sharing of those said custom games that they created. But in the end, it was never released, most likely because sharing creations would be difficult without the internet. And so the concept of Super Mario Maker was a tool for Nintendo's internal development team to make Mario levels for a very long time. But the team, however, quickly realized the tool's potential as a standalone game and subsequently pitched the idea to senior game designer Takashi Tezuka, and so the game was born. Now members of the Kaizo community play, rate and compare games for discussion on Discord, YouTube and Twitch. Notable Kaizo creators include Barbarous King, Pengua Penga, and Grand Pooh Bear. These names are a bit odd, to be honest. But all of them speedrun and livestream games in the genre. And as you would expect, they continued with the release of Super Mario Maker sequel in 2019, which was even bigger than the original thanks to the Nintendo Switch being such a hit. One of the most famous courses they've made so far is a level that's similar to World 1-1 from Super Mario Bros. But they added a little twist. Dozens of twirling fire bars, making the level almost impossible. Well, I could never beat it at least. But of course, there are many other incredibly famous levels that got their fame all thanks to Super Mario Maker 2 being such a smash hit. And that's the story of Kaizo Mario, a concept that began in the 80s and 90s, and slowly but surely, thanks to the internet and viral stunts, grew into something bigger, with it going completely mainstream thanks to Super Mario Maker, which lowered the bar of entry for both creators and the players. And who knows what will happen in the upcoming years. Now I want to give a special thanks to a person known as GlitchCat7. He wrote an entire article on Kaizo Mario's history. I used a lot of information from it and even certain segments from it, from it in this script. So go check him out. I put it in the description. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to let me know down below in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe, click the bell button and tell me what you think about concepts like this and the Super Mario Galaxy DS and Twilight Princess 3DS hoax videos. 